However, then we get onto this very interesting uh, bit. Now, this this sounds in itself, it doesn't sound like anything I haven't heard a million times before, but it's the fact that I've heard this so many times before, and the fact that I've never ever really made a point of just trying to explain it in crayon with big pictures. I got a, I got a message from a user who goes by the name uh, Batman Lover 9000. You know this guy does not have issues with his masculinity. Batman Lover 9000. Now I don't know if he's saying he's the lover who is Batman or he's a Batman lover. He's a Batman lover. He does wrong and you will something. Right. He said this. And this is and it is from this tiny acorn of simple abusive trolling that this whole podcast will grow into a mighty oak. He said, Batman Lover 9000, sucking Islam's dick one Muslim at a time, while atheists and homosexuals continue to be systematically executed in Islamic states just like Jews in a Nazi concentration camp. Yay, left wing, and fuck the impartial middle. Now, uh, loads of jokes in there that I can go for. The obvious one is the fact that this guy seems to think that he is the impartial middle. And let's be clear here. Being left wing or right wing on any issue has got nothing to do with whether or not you are right or wrong or impartial. Just because you're one of those wankers who sits in the middle and, and doesn't doesn't dare take a position, you sit you you can, you can throw mud at people from both sides and have a go at them as if you are the one who has you know who has been you know who has seen both sides of the dark coin and the abyss is, is coming on both of them. No, so fuck you and your, what, what is your impartiality in this? Right? But let's go through this. Sucking Islam's dick one Muslim at a time, I have no idea which, uh, what, what exactly I said uh, regard, in regards to Muslims because the particular podcast was me basically starting you know, by having a go at atheists for not being able to take a joke. Um, and, but it's his claim that while atheists and homosexuals continue to be, and I quote, systematically executed in Islamic states, just like Jews in a Nazi concentration camp. Now, I, I am well aware that there are many uh, very, very uh, unpleasant uh, Islamic theocracies and dictatorships uh, throughout the world where atheists and homosexuals are not exactly on the uh, top of the, they're not exactly going to win Man of the Year. But, um, they wouldn't win Woman of the Year because they don't have an award for that. Um, but, I have, I have absolutely, I haven't heard a single thing, and I'm pretty sure someone would have picked up on it. And uh, on the systematic execution of, of atheists and homosexuals, that is basically identical to the Jews in a Nazi concentration camp. Now, this is exactly the kind of comment I will get from someone who is basically got nothing to do but attempt to shame me into and, and make me feel guilty because what he's implicit what he's implying here what he's doing is he is implicating me as someone who is enabling and basically choosing to ignore and uh, and and not bring any attention to what is apparently an atheist and homosexual holocaust which i think would actually make a great sort of you know exploitation porn film title however I have no fucking idea about any concentration camps that are going on and systematic uh, executions at that. I know there have been them, right? I'm not denying that. And I never have done. That would be completely mental, right? But what's interesting is about, about people like Batman Lover and anyone else who leaves comments like this, who go on about how there's these horrible things and when, and when am I going to talk about the Muslims and when am I going to, you know, and Islam. And you know what's been fucking thing? 99% of the people who sit there and attack me for apparently not covering or not talking about something and allowing uh, some kind of uh, sort of extreme Islamist sort of Borg uh, sort of infestation or sort of uh, assimilation to occur is that whenever I click on the YouTube channels or the do you know what's on them? Fuck all. Nothing. Not a sodding sausage. The best you will find is they've got Call of Duty Let's Play videos. Sure, they go around posting comments and liking videos by other people who have had the fucking, who've had the motivation to step in and try and stop this alleged fucking atheist, you know, gay atheist fucking 
you know, a genocide that's occurring in random Islamic states that are not named, it would have been helped, an address would have been nice. But you think, if this guy was genuinely concerned about this, and he believed that this is something, that, why is he sitting there waiting for me to say something, when clearly I am part of the, you know, of the left-wing, you know, Islamo-loving Muslim ball lickers who are going to sit there and wait for the caliphate to be installed so we can sort of just join in because we just love curry and having a beard. Now, at the end of the fucking day, if this guy expects me to fucking give a shit about about his fucking problems, you know, if he can't be bothered to make a fucking YouTube video, to write a blog, right, it, it, it typifies the act, because say what you want about me, this guy can call me whatever he wants, and people can call me whatever they want, and believe me, they have. There is not a single fucking, you know, horrific, slanderous label or, you know, accusation that has been thrown at me in the last six and a half years that you could possibly top. Everything. You know, and not, uh, you know, including, and, you know, I'm not kidding, I was once accused of trafficking, producing, and distributing child snuff pornography. Right? An industry which, by the way, is booming, and you might want to get on the NASDAQ on that. Right? Now, uh, now, sorry. So, yes, so it, all of this shit's going on. Uh, you can say what you want about me. I give a shit about what I do. I care about this, right? I do what I do because I enjoy it, it's fun, it keeps me busy, it allows me to express myself, and it's something, it's one of the few things I'm good at, right? And you can find out the second thing if you're lucky, <laughs> fellas. Now, but the other thing, but the fact of the matter is this, I de genuinely give a shit, and that's, if that's nothing else, that's the one thing I will say, if I get nothing else right, you know, I'm not here to pull fucking wool over anyone's eyes. I have no interest, believe me, of, 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 of speeding along creeping Shariahs to get it onto a sort of rambling Sharia. I am not here to fucking throw a Harry Potter cloak of invisibility over the stealth jihad. You know? It is not in my interests whatsoever. Right? The reason I don't sit there and shit my knickers over these imaginary, non-existent and completely and utterly well, what you would say is almost, they're, they're, they're these things that don't exist, but we're supposed to believe they're there based on no evidence. And it's atheists who tend to fucking believe these things, like stealth jihad and creeping sharia, which are not, which are terms and uses of English language that have gone throughout history. Right? Now, as for the Islamo sympathizer, and even secret Muslim, I shit you not, I have people accuse me of being a secret Muslim. What, 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 what would the point be? Right. I don't know if anyone pays attention to the sort of general uh, sort of behaviour of the atheist uh, communities or the at atheist activists on the internet, but the last thing they need is someone to come in and make them look bad. It would, in order for that to happen, it would necessitate that there would have been a point in time when they looked good enough that it felt like a problem. Richard Dawkins' Twitter account alone is setting us back a good 500 years. I find it funny that Islamo sympathizer is thrown around by people who, when you use the term Islamophobe, they say it's a made up word. You know, as opposed to all those other words that exist existentially of our own fucking language, right? I get accused of, and generally what he happens is people use the term, he's used the term sucking Islam's dick, one Muslim at a time. Um, because I'm a gentleman, you know, I don't want to, I want people to feel like I'm giving them a treat. Uh, I'm not going to go for one of those, you know, octopus. Bukaki things, but the fact is, people always categorise the videos I make whenever I respond to someone, and it generally is a response. I'm dealing with the English Defence League or something that, you know, and the Anders Brevik thing was very important. People like UKIP, people like the uh, British National Party, general stuff you might read in papers like the Daily Mail, the Telegraph, the Daily Express, shithole rags like that. A lot of stuff that happens in America, the general right wing country of the fucking media and beyond. They, they categorise my videos as defending Islam, or even say it is, I'm an Islamic apologist, neither of which are true. At no point have I ever defended the religious faith and beliefs, or the actual doctrine, the tenets of Islam. I never have. I don't know if, because I, like most people, particularly the people who rant and rave about Muslims more than anyone, know fuck all about it. Right. It's, the difference is I'm prepared to admit that, but I don't care, I'm not interested in, doc, in what the book texts say, I'm not interested in what the books say, because none of those things are really fucking relevant, ultimately when you get down to the fact that what matters 
What really is fucking relevant and what we know to be true is that people will behave how they want to behave. Right? People will be what they want to be and most people will be quite fucking, you know, quite tolerable. Right? And in this country, most Muslims, despite what you might hear, right, are quite fucking happy getting on with their lives. And the last thing they need is 5,000 fucking six inch thick skulled, thumbless fucking Cro Magnon men walking past their house with anchovy tattooed on their fucking forehead, throwing dog shit, dog shit wrapped in bacon through their letterbox. You know, it tends not to contribute to a, a, nice, a nice, relaxing, moderate society. Right? Now, the, the, it's, it's, I find it also bizarre that the, 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 there seems to be this almost pathological bewilderment and confusion by people who are atheists, right, who laughably claim to be secularists or humanists, but apparently don't know what either of those mean, but they will, they will suggest things that I, I must be a secret Muslim, I must be a Muslim pretending to be an atheist, because why would an atheist make a video, or, you know, or in any way come out and try to, uh, you know, counter or argue against in any way someone who is saying bad things about Islam or Muslims or religion in general. Right? Well you know what, I've made lots of videos that have, um, got, that have dealt with the subject of homophobia and I've made lots of videos in which I have you know, got, gone after and attacked the, the things that have been said and uh, promoted and ideas that have been spouted by homophobes. And you know what, I'm not fucking gay. No I'm not. Don't ask my dad though. Right? I'm not gay, but I will but I will attack people who spread lies and hatred against gay people. Do you know why? Because I'm a human being and it's the right thing to do. Right? I'm not a woman or a transgendered person, but I but that doesn't mean that I'm happy to sit by and let someone spout a load of their own vile brand of misogynistic transphobia. And yes, that includes the turfs who are, you know, um trans exclusionary radical feminists who think that any ma who think that any trans person who is male to female is committing some sort of stealth jihad or I suppose in this place it would be a stealth gonad against the sisterhood fuck them right i am not an ethnic minority of any kind but i do play one on the internet however in real life i am as white as anything and i but i will i and i have done with with great vigor and and con and consistency defend you know, ethnic minorities against anyone who has promoted bigotry and negative stereotypes against them. And it's because I'm a human being, not because I'm a secret Negro. Right? I'm not a Jew and I have no relatives who are Jews or connections to the Nazi Holocaust. I have one mate who's a Jew and he's not even a Jew, he's a Buddhist and a crap one at that. Right? But in the past I've taken down many anti people who are anti-Semitic or Holocaust deniers and I'm going to continue to do so because I'm a human being and it's the right thing to do. And I do it because that's what I would want other people to do for me. I know Christianity owns the golden rule, but I have reclaimed it for the non-believer. Okay? And I don't do it, right? I don't do it because... Why do I do it? I don't do it because I've been brainwashed by the liberal media, or because I'm scared that if I don't do it, I'll be labelled some sort of racist or misogynist or anti-Semite or a Nazi, or if I don't, uh, don't do it. Because guess what? Despite everything I've done in the past and my track record of, of the subjects I've covered, I still get called all of those things, and by the same people who like to continually bitch and moan, uh, and much, much more about what they're called, about being called a racist. Oh, they called me a racist. Well, tough fucking shit. Get over it. Jesus Christ, we're not fucking playground, are we? Yeah, you get called names. It's the internet, sweetheart. Right, there is this idea put about by the loudest and whiniest of voices on the right, in the media and other places, and in activism and YouTube punditry, that in this day and age, unless you agree with the people on the left on everything, unless you, you, you sit there and you agree with them on every issue, and if you dare to voice any controversial opinion or anything that goes against the left, which part of the left? I don't know, all of them. We will viciously bully you and have you labelled a racist, fascist, Nazi in, in, in an attempt to apparently silent the, silence the voices of you and our opponents. And do you know what? You're goddamn fucking right. But they do that, and do you know what? Why not? It's not against the law. It works. And if it works, why wouldn't you do it? How many times has some miserable pile of con conservative cocksnot crumbled under the pressure of some, oh god, the, the liberals are tweeting things at me, they're calling me nasty nerd, and they've sat there and just immediately backtracked and apologised for being a twat. Right? Now, I don't advocate, advocate sending anyone death threats, threats of violence, murder, rape, or anything to anyone. You don't need to do that. I don't care how despicable they may be, even if it's Richard Littlejohn. No, not if it's Richard Littlejohn. You can threaten to kill him. Right? But, if you say something that pisses people off, 
in this day and age on the internet, social media, and you say something that pisses people off so much that you end up having to have your Facebook and Twitter and YouTube channel bombarded like it's the beaches at Normandy by angry, pissed off people sending you messages telling you they, what they think about you and labelling you a bigot and a moron, then that is the price you have to pay for being a moron and a bigot who says things publicly that are moronic and bigoted. And if you can't stand the heat, then keep your fucking mouth shut in the kitchen. Now, in the last six years, I have been called... These are things I've been called by many people since I've been on certainly involved in the internet doing this. A racist, a race traitor, anti-white, secret Muslim, Islamo-fascist, Islamo-sympathiser, Islamo-friendly, Islamo-Nazi, Zionist shill, uh, Holocaust denier, crypto-Jew, Nazi, sexist, anti-Semite, misandrist, cultural Marxist, an apologist for terrorism, and a few dozen other things that are equally stupid, paranoid, and fucking hilarious. I've had more death threats than most people have had hot dinners. Right? I've, had, I've had people phone me up on my Skype. I've had people phone me on my mobile phone and on my house phone threatening to kill me. I've had my name, address and photos of my house posted on various websites like Redwatch, which is a place where right-wingers meet to get information on people who oppose them so they can go and fucking basically vandalise and beat the shit out of them. I have had some. I had someone. I even had someone send me handwritten death threats on a on a piece of paper in a letter posted through my letterbox. Not posted with a fucking stamp. Put through my letterbox by hand. Right. The person who it was there because the person who wrote it stood in front of my door. Roughly ninety nine point nine percent of all of these mild to extreme acts of uh, that have been that have been uh, that have happened to me were carried out by a member or members of the political right or far right and how many times in the last 6 years let me ask you how many times in the last 6 years let me ask you have i fucking ever backed down quickly or you know just or ran away or quickly started to c cover me ass and start publicly apologizing and retract anything i've said never nil no not once Right? And it's not because I'm some well hard nutter who reckons I can handle myself if any of these people try to attack me. Because I'm not. I couldn't. I have about as much effective... The, the level of damage I can do in any physical encounter is about roughly the same you would expect to, when, if a newborn kitten with a sponge on its head walked into you by accident. I'm pretty much fucking useless in any fight situation. Right? The only advantage I have is I'm so thin there's less of me to hit. Right? I cut through the air better when I'm running away. If the EDL or the BMP or the National Frat or even Combat 18 came after me, trust me, they'd make mincemeat out of me in a matter of nanoseconds. The reason I don't back down, shut up or sit in the corner like a good little boy is because I believe in what I say, all of it, every word, every idea, everything. I have to, otherwise if I didn't, I'd have to start questioning whether it was worth it. Right? When I come out and I say racism is bad, homophobia is bad, sexism is bad, xenophobia is bad, fear of the other, the enemy, the perceived fucking threat to your safety is bad, irrational hatred of anyone or anything is bad, elitism is bad, equality is good, diversity is good, individuality is good, creativity is good, multiculturalism is good, tolerance is good, and that ultimately love is the answer. I don't say that because uh, you know, of what I think everyone wants to hear. I say it because that's what I believe to be true. If all I wanted to do would be popular, Trust me, the last thing I do would waste my time on that hippie lovey mung beanie in fucking cheesecloth shirt wearing peace and love shit, right? Because as far as I can tell, most people don't want to hear that stuff. Most people seem quite content to sit there and want something to hate and fear, and all they need is someone to point them in the right fucking direction, right? They don't, they just tell us who the enemy is and we will fucking accept it. At the moment, and indeed for the last fucking ten years, the enemy, at least one of them, of many, right, has been the Muslims. Not the small minority of radical extremist fundamentalist hate-preaching Muslims who certainly do not represent or speak for most of the Muslims in Europe or in the UK or America, or in every other non-Islamic slash secular slash Christian European first world country with a Muslim minority. No, the enemy is the Muslims, aka all of them. And we have been force-fed this non-stop since September the 12th, 2001. And you know the rhetoric off by heart, right? They hate our way of life. They don't mix well with us. They want, to, they want us to keep to themselves. They hate us for our freedom. They hate the West. They hate democracy. They hate, their goal is to invade, to conquer. Their goal is to take over Europe, to America, to rule the world and send us back to the Stone Age. There are no moderates. They never speak out. And no, we haven't researched this claim in any way whatsoever. No matter how easy it would be for me to Google the words Muslims denounce terrorism and realise that it happens actually all the fucking time. I'm not going to do that because we all know that the only real Muslims are the terrorists and the suicide bombers and the ones who aren't either wish they were or secretly support those who are. Not all Muslims are terrorists but all terrorists are Muslims and, and that's a fact regardless 
of what all the available data and statistics shows, because I have never seen any other type of Muslim or terrorist mentioned in the newspapers who wasn't Muslim. And if it's not in the papers, obviously, they've got no interest in trying to fucking influence our, our way of life. And why are those few brave people who dare to speak out and oppose and even commit acts of violence against the evils of Islam treated as if they're the bad guys? Name me one terrorist attack committed by someone who opposed Islam. And no, Anders Breivik doesn't count, right? Because he was just clearly some severely mentally ill man and none of his paranoid delusions were responsible for the cold-blooded massacre of 77 people, 69 of which were teenage kids. But he did make some very good points and I do agree with him on a lot of stuff. And anyway, that mass murder was all Islam's fault because if the Muslims weren't in the first place it wouldn't have happened. Uh, Islam is not a religion, it's a fascist political ideology. And we know this is true because the only people who say that happen to be politicians who are involved in parties that are, whose basis is that of a fascist ideology. Right. They will kill and molest our children and legalise child marriage. They will flood into our nations and, f and make rape women and force them to wear burqas. They will even go as far to make KFC and Subway serve us secretly halal chicken in our sandwiches, which is a cruel and barbaric practice, and it, it's made me really con concerned for animals' welfare, even though I didn't give a shit about it up until now when I realised Muslims were doing it. Right, they even fought for Hitler, for Hitler on the side of Hitler during World War II, because they share his anti-Semitism and desire to exterminate the Jews. And let's just ignore all that stuff about Hitler espousing Christianity, and, and so we can use it against the very people who are using that argument, and let's forget about the fact that he invokes God and Bible a million times, and let's pass over the tens of thousands Thousands of Muslims who actually fought and mostly died, you know, fighting with Britain against the Germans in both world wars. Let's fucking forget about that, because I mean, they even went and built a triumphalist mosque on Ground Zero in New York, with, which the pro-Islam president, Imam Hussein Stalin Obama, did nothing to stop the construction of. Right, and then now the PC leftist would have you believe that this this was actually a you know just a community centre. And it had like a crash, a swimming pool, a gym, a library, and things like a culinary school and an internet cafe. That was actually, and it was actually about a 15 minute walk from Ground Zero, not anywhere near it. And, the, and it was legally purchased privately uh, for $100 million and thus protected from the government uh, by intervention, for the, from government intervention by the so called Constitution. Now, we've tried to reason with these people, Lady. We have tried to reason with the Muslims. They would not listen to us. No matter how many times we went out of our way to draw extremely crude, offensive, and often racist depictions of their pedo prophet Muhammad fucking a camel, they did not want to fucking listen. No matter how many Korans we burnt, no matter how many mosques we vandalised, petrol bombed or threw the heads of pigs into, no matter how many marches the EDL have gone on in the UK, which is well over 300, no matter how many sensationalist bullshit conspiracy theories we have made up about them in an effort to try and stop them being what they are, no matter what we did, still they choose to carry on being Muslims, because they're inherently fucking evil. Now are you all, now, that's what you've heard for the, pretty much the last 10-11 years. Now are you scared yet? Because if you're not, they will try and make sure you will be. The only bit that scares me is everything I've just said there barely covers 1% of the bullshit I've been having to fear, I've been, I've been fed and listened to over the last 12 years, and I've had to sit there and stand by as people fucking spout it out, and it's acceptable. The sad part about this is fear-mongering works. Terrorism works. That's the only thing the war on terror has taught me. It always has. This isn't the first time, and this isn't even the first time in my lifetime. I'm only 34. I know I don't look it, I've got a boyish Bieber like good looks, and yet I don't need to look in a history book or be told by someone from the good old days what, that this stuff has happened before. If you had YouTube in the 1970s and 80s, all of the videos and stuff you see about Muslims and Islam Right, would still exist, except that it would be replaced with the words Ireland, IRA, and Irishman. Right, I wasn't even old enough to fully understand or pay attention to it in, in, in the political climate at the time, but I was, it was easy to recognise uh, at the time. Every single thing that is happening now, that all of that stuff that, that is now the focus, where Muslims are the focus of, in this country and many others, happened to the Irish many, many times because of the terrorism attacks that were happening in Britain by them, right, by the IRA. The prejudice, the fear, the suspicion, the disproportionate sensationalist media coverage, the paranoia, bigotry and victimisation by the police, a patriotic vigilante groups who would go after them and attack them. Some may point out that the Irish were not there were not cases of the Irish being sent to a Guantanamo Bay like place, um, and but you uh, may have but you may have been arrested and ultimately convicted for being terrorists with no evidence whatsoever. Now uh, they <laughs> Sorry, lost me place there completely. They haven't been sent to somewhere like Guantanamo Bay, but 
Whilst Guantanamo Bay has not happened, you may want to look up these things. Guildford 4, Maguire 7, Birmingham 6. The three very high-profile court cases in which 17 Irishmen were arrested and ultimately convicted for being terrorists with no evidence whatsoever. Just confessions that, were, it turned out, were beaten out of them by the police. They went to prison each for 16 fucking years. They were released in 1991. They've been paid off substantially. I mean, it wasn't until after that that it was finally revealed they were all innocent, they had no involvement in terrorism, and that the confessions were made under the fucking coercion of police violence. Now, does that sound familiar to you? Right? That's exactly what happened to, the, to, uh, to a group of Muslims who got sent to Guantanamo, and it turned out they were working in curries, but they had confessed to being in an Al-Qaeda training cell because they'd been tortured so much they just admitted to it. I could go on and on with this throughout history. We had the Japanese internment camps in World War II in America. You've got the Indian Sikh massacres in 1984. One million Tutsi fucking were slaughtered in a Rwandan genocide in the space of three months. Well, you know, when we first heard about, about AIDS in the 80s, it was suddenly all the gays were the problem and the enemy. The immigrants have always been the enemy in some form or another, they've just been different. Coming over here, nicking our jobs, claiming better than yada yada yada. There's been the Slavs, the Roman Egyptians, the Blacks, the Pakistanis, the Mexicans, the Poles. There's been two Muslim genoc genocides committed in Bosnia and Serbia, each as early as the 1990s, both of which are denied by Pamela Geller, incidentally. Inevitably and eventually, every road down this journey, that you, when you start going that way, you end up back, as always, with the Nazi Holocaust in World War II. And sadly, these days, it gets thrown around so fucking ridiculously as, as, a, way, as a sort of debating tool. You know, the word Nazi and Holocaust is invoked but to such an extent that it's almost hilarious to, when you hear it. You can't, it takes away all of the actual dread and fear that we should feel when you hear those words and when you think about that. When you have people like Glenn Beck comparing global warming to the Holocaust, or Ted Cruz invoking Hitler and Nazi Germany over Obamacare, it's very difficult to suddenly get all tumescent about it. Uh, it sounds funny, but the truth is, it isn't. Because in my opinion, the best way for us to stop ourselves from repeating these most horrific events from the past throughout history, which we have already repeated time and time again, right, in every culture, Always. It never stops. It's like a fucking Scooby-Doo cartoon of bigotry. Right? You should, make you, f you should feel physically sick at the mention of things like the Holocaust, right? The very thought of these things should send a shiver down your spine. But in the current political climate where it's just a, a way to win a debate on television or trying to scare people into fucking voting for you, you know, it's, it's, what, you know why? Cause you, so you can win a vote. Six million people died so you could win a fucking vote or get a poxy television debate. Genocide, thankfully, before anyone accuses me of being sensationalist, I am not by any means saying that this is the usual and most common outcome. I am not trying to su suggest that we are on our road, we are on our way there and it's just round the corner. Because it's not. And I do not think we ultimately will be. It's the, it's the l worst outcome ever. But... It's not, if it does, if we don't end up down there, it's not going to be because we as people are above doing such inhumane barbarity in this day and age, because I don't think we, I don't think that's true for us like We are still incredibly cruel. And I'm sure that there was a time, you know, back in Germany, when people thought the same thing. They thought, there's no way this, this sort of thing would end up happening. And no, again, I'm not suggesting there's Holocaust 2.0 in the way. What I'm saying, though, is that we are currently on that pathway of which there is only one. There are no fucking turns around the side. You either turn back or you keep going. Right, it's the same road we've already been down. And every time I do, you bring this up or you mention it, and I've never really invoked this before because I didn't want to get into the, the sort of just the people who were getting over the top, who get over the top and take it the wrong way. You always hear, oh, this shit will never happen. That had never happened in this day and age. If I told you on September the 10th, 2001, that, the, you know, the, that those two big buildings there won't be there because two fucking planes hijacked by 19 Muslims are going to go flying into it and they're going to collapse, you'd be like, it's fucking mental, man. You've been taking drugs. No. And neither would I, I wouldn't believe that. Would you believe you know, Dunblane School Massacre, Anders Brevik Massacre? Would you have believed they were possible before they happened? No, I wouldn't either, and we shouldn't. Right? Because if we lived our lives like that, we'd spend every day living, guess what, in fear. Right? And we are, partially, but we're living in fear of one thing. That we have no reason to fear, because it's always been here, and we just didn't notice it until a few of them blew up one day. That's what terrorism is. That's how simple and easy it is to get people. And not only does it convince you to be in a constant state of fear and paranoia, not only does it compel you to spread this fear and paranoia to end, and put it on to anyone and everyone who you meet, but it will get you to the point where you are willing to do anything, and I mean anything, in order to put an end to it. Terrorism is rohypnol for fascists. 
Terrorism will not stop you unless you stop being terrified. Right? Now, let me, let me give you an example. In case you think that I'm still being over the top and sensationalist, I'm going to read some quotes for you by someone, and I want you to think about who this sounds like and who this is. Here's a quote. Uh, here's a, here's a quote. This is, this is a, someone who would be involved in the political debate and discussion somehow. Okay. Will Jews... <clears throat> Will the Jews drag Britain to war? In the light of recent events, we, are deliberately, we, we state deliberately that Jews are striving to involve Britain in war. Now let's take the word Jew out here and let's do Muslim instead. Will the Muslims drag Britain into war? In the light of recent events, we are state deliberately that the Muslims are striving to involve Britain in war. The Muslims have now organised as a radical minority within the state to conduct a furious agitation with all the force of their great, pa great money and power, which can have no effect except to drag this country towards another war. The Muslims gripping great instruments for the great expression of opinion use such instruments for the benefit of, uh, do, do not use do so for the benefit of Britain, but they do so for Islam. It is the Muslims, it is the Muslims, not we, who are now clearly pr proved to have forced the struggle against us and the forces of war, and the Muslims and old parties who, who they dominate, whether conservative, liberal or socialist. Uh, let's, try, let's try this one, and let's do the same thing, shall we? Um, Muslims put the interest of, Brit of Britain should put the interest of Britain before those of Islam, or they should be deported. This is not a principle of racial or religious persecution. Any well-governed nation must insist that its citizens owe allegiance to the nation and not to the co-racialists and co-religionist residents outside its borders and organised as a state within a state. The Muslims as a whole have chosen to organise themselves as a nation within our nation. They have chosen not to integrate and to be like us, and to set their interests before those of Great Britain, they must, like everyone else, put Britain first. Now, that, all of those quotes are from Oswald Mosley in the 1930s, I think it's late 1930s, when he was the leader of the British Union of Fascists. He was attempting to do to Britain what Hitler at the time, who was his best mate, and who, you know, they loved the Holocaust, right? who was his best friend, the British, to do the same thing. And all of that shit sounds remarkably similar. And what it says to me is that when you see your Gert Wilders, your Condells, your, your Tommy Robinsons, your Robert Spencers, your Pam, Pamela fucking Gellers, and all those shitty websites like religionofpeace.com and all these other cunts out there, all of these people, when they say what they're saying, stop and think, if this was being said about Jews, how would I feel? Because you'd probably feel fucking uncomfortable. And you've got to remember, that level of discomfort that you would feel is you, the, the level of comfort that you then feel when they say it with Muslims, or the level of just sort of passe, intoler passe tolerance, is what they felt when they did the Jews, because of things like the media and things like people like this, this basic pattern of scaremongering that hasn't changed. And I'm going to read this to you. This is quite a fucking interesting one. I'm going to leave a link below, actually, to a Daily Mail article from 1938. Now, the Daily Mail were avid supporters of the British Union of Fascists and Nazis in general, and in 1938 they wrote an article that was called The, Immig the Illegal Immigration Flood Continues. And they talk about how the, uh, the immigrants are flooding into the nation and they are attempting to get into Britain illegally. And do you know what those immigrants were? They were Jews running from Germany. And guess what? It's basically just like a sort of template you'd get. They might as well have a Daily Mail bot who can just change the minority you want to sit there and persecute one day. That's all this has ever ended up being, and it's all it's going to be. Now, what I do not think for one second that it, we have to go that far. I think we are, we, we are at a stage where we are too self-aware. I think things like the internet have put us in a position where we know that where our aggression is still somewhat passive. But there is still a tolerance of this shit that should not be allowed. Right? I shouldn't be have to sit there and hear people say things that in the 1938, I would, 1938, I would hear, you know, Oswald Mosley or Hitler or the Daily Mail talking about just a different minority group. Right? Think of all that time and effort and work and emotion over the last 10 years that has been wasted on protesting things like the building of mosques that aren't really mosques, hundreds of marches in opposition to seemingly invisible armies of radical Islamists who live in Britain, giving away money to two-bit con artists like Tommy Robinson, Right, who, and ver whose very career, along with the rest of what I call Islamophobia Incorporated, sit there and salivate every time a Muslim does something that gets them in the news. When a crazy Muslimic fundamentaloid does something Muslimic fundamentalist and crazy. Right? It's, Islamophobia is now not just a made-up word, it's a fucking industry. Gert Wilders, his, his approval rating goes up 20 points every single time there is a high-profile incident involving a Muslim extremist. 
His career depends on that. I don't give two shits about you having a philosophical or, or an ideological dispute or objection to something that's in the Quran, or you know, or something about the Prophet Muhammad, or something that's written in the Quran, or something that you read was written in the Quran on jihadwatch.com. Right? But you, when you make it your goal to portray every single Muslim in the world as a big, a big extremist monolithic borg with one mind and one objective, a single entity that is, that is dehumanization. That is when you've crossed the line and you have started once again going down that same long dark road. And we've already been down there and I'm not going to be the one who sat there and just said well, and ignored it. I'm not the problem, because I'm not being afraid. I'm not scared when a Muslim gets on a bus next to me, or unless he's got a rucksack filled with wires and a, and a clock. Right? And it is, it is because I'm not afraid that I will not sit here and stay silent and let people who... This is not all because of Batman Lover 9000, let me just be clear. This is six years of non-stop fucking accusations and people throwing this shit at me. And, and every single time I've just brushed it off, and I'm here to say, this is why I do it. And if you're not going to sit there and speak out, then, then fuck off, because you're as much fucking use, right? I will not stay silent and allow the terrorists to defeat us by making us collapse under the weight of our own irrational, paranoid fear of whoever the other is now, right? I, I'm sure there'll be lots of questions. Aizala Maleka, motherfucker. Now, before I go, I'd like to end on a very nice note. Speaking of the Daily Mail, one of the things that the Daily Mail is known for is um, cancer. In that it, uh, it's known for basically reminding us and pointing out all of the things that they uh, that have been discovered can give you cancer and almost you know will certainly end your life a lot sooner. And um, I, I went, I found this uh, place that had very kindly compiled a list of stuff that over the years I'm going to read to you a list of things. All of these things have at one point by the Daily Mail been claimed to give you cancer because if the Muslims won't kill you the black tumours inside you and the Daily Mail hates anything black so you will get cancer from the following things getting older, babies, being black, being a woman, being a man, biscuits, blowjobs, bras, broccoli, bubble bath, candlelit dinners, darkness, cats, dogs, cheese, having children, not having children, living in a city, climate change, birth control pills, cooking, dieting, dildos, electricity, Facebook, fibre, fruit, fruit juice, gardens, internet, having a large head, being left-handed, the menopause, menstruation, being middle class, estrogen, 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 pastry, potatoes, being poor, rice, retirement, being pregnant, sex, soup, teenage sex, sex with teenagers, space travel, the iPad, third hand smoke, whatever the fuck that is, television, vitamins, water, Wi Fi, working, unemployment, hugging, turning the light on at night when you go to the toilet, the war in Iraq, and yogurt. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, we, we can rest assured, we can take it easy because we know the Daily Mail is always wrong. But if they're not, basically, if you are a mammal that is alive and you spend any amount of your time doing both, neither, or absolutely anything, or nothing, or both, forever and not at all, then you're definitely going to get cancer and die. And I think we can all take some comfort in that.